Welcome to Wiley Writers Reading. We're lucky to have Lisa Morton reading to us today, but we're even luckier that you found our channel. So please take a beat right now to click the like button and subscribe to the channel. That's the best way to help us feel your presence. So Lisa Morton is a screenwriter, author of nonfiction books and prose writer whose work was described by the American Library Association's Reader's Advisory Guide to Horror as consistently dark, unsettling, and frightening. She is a six-time winner of the Bram Stoker Award, which gives me chills just saying that out loud, <laughs> the author of four novels and over 150 short stories, and she's a world-class Halloween expert. Welcome, Lisa. Uh, why don't you tell us a little about your story or whatever you'd like to mention? Thanks for that introduction, Angel. And yes, the six-time Bram Stoker Award winner thing gives me, I don't know, chills or something. I'm not sure what, but um, that was a lovely introduction. I'm really happy to be here today. I'm going to be reading a story from a forthcoming podcast project called Spine Tinglers. Um, this is going to be part of a package of paranormal themed podcasts that are going to be debuting in the fall, but this one is actually a fiction podcast. Um, each week will be a new short, short story from me, read by a celebrity reader. Um, <laughs> I've already written about 25 of these, and about half of them have already been recorded, and they've, they've had some really, really cool people recording these. They're um, kind of people who are superstars in the paranormal field, some of them. Um, there are some rock stars, there are magicians, there are writers. It's been really fun to see it come together, and I can't wait for it to launch in the fall. Um, I'm really excited about it, and it's it's going to get kind of a big launch. Um, there's going to be stuff in the trades about it, blah, blah, blah. So um, without further ado, I'm going to read one of these stories I wrote for Spine Tingles. This one is called Poppies. And if you live in California, in Southern California especially, you probably are aware of our beautiful orange California poppies that bust out every spring and just cover the hillsides. My backyard is full of them because I'm into native landscaping. And um, I thought it would be interesting to try and take something that is absolutely glorious and vibrant and full of life and turn it into something creepier than hell. So. Let's see if I succeeded at all. And um, by the way, I, as I mentioned earlier, I will not be reading any of these stories on the podcast. So this is a chance to get to hear me actually read one of these instead of the celebrity reader. So this is Poppies. Jasmine stood next to her mini coop staring out at the endless sea of orange blossoms. Okay, Sean said from the other side of the, the car, I gotta say it's beautiful. She nodded, and he knew she was probably glad he'd said that. He hadn't really wanted to come on this drive 90 minutes from Silver Lake up into the foothills where the California poppies were in full bloom, but she'd promised him lunch afterwards at his favorite taco joint, and he'd acquiesced. Besides, not as if he had much else to do since he'd been an, an unemployed barista for the last two months. The field of golden flowers was separated from the winding two-lane highway by a low picket fence. Signs were spaced along that border reading, no trespassing and please do not cross fence. Jasmine raised a leg in preparation for stepping over the pickets. What are you doing? asked Sean, mildly alarmed, but also amused. Come on, we drove all the way up here. So let's run through the field like Julie Andrews in The Sound of Music. I think she was running across grass in the Alps jazz. Whatever, Jasmine stepped over the fence and stood in the field. The poppies came up almost to her knees, the growth so dense that her feet were lost from her view. Dude, let's do this. Something itched at Sean, like a tick digging in. He looked around, his uneasiness growing. So where's everyone else? Isn't this whole poppy thing huge in the news? Jasmine shrugged. Well, that's why I picked a Monday morning. Yesterday, it was probably jammed. Sean finally figured out what was bothering him. It was the cars. They lined both sides of the highway, pulled over on the dirt shoulders next to the picket fences. A lot of them were SUVs, meaning families were here or had been. If nobody's here today, what's with all the cars? 
Jasmine was getting irritated. I don't know, maybe people park here to carpool or something. Who cares? Come on. She turned and started running through the poppies, their orange heads nodding and parting before. Sean reluctantly stepped over the fence. The ground on the other side was surprisingly soft underfoot, not hard packed like the clay soil of the shoulder. He took a few steps forward, finally breaking into a jog to reach his friend. I love this, Jasmine called, running across the field with her arms widespread. Sean ran forward a few feet, then stopped, taking in the surroundings. He turned 360 degrees, seeing poppies in every direction. He remembered being frightened by the poppy seen from the Wizard of Oz as a child, but those poppies hadn't been orange like these. He inhaled deeply, surprised by the slight scent of something musky, almost meaty. He saw that Jasmine had stopped running and was looking down. What? Sean called to her. She bent down, scrutinizing the greenery beneath their orange. He just tripped on something. Sean took one step towards her and gasped as his right foot sank into the earth. He yanked it back, but it was caught on something. He pulled harder and it came free. He raised it to look, balancing on one leg and saw some sort of brownish dirt colored root still wrapped around the toes of his sneakers. Huh, he said to himself, wondering how the root could have wrapped all the way around his foot in a split second. Shivering in the warm, still air, Sean shouted to Jasmine, what if there are snakes or scorpions or something out here? To his surprise, Jasmine didn't laugh the suggestion off. Maybe, she said, looking around her own feet. I'm going back, Sean said, before he tripped and went down. His hands landed on something moist and squishy, buried below the poppy, something that didn't feel like soil. He grabbed a mass in his right hand and pulled it free to examine. It was a dirt clod the size of a softball, something pale, just visible beneath the dark brown. Sean shook it to remove some of the dirt crying out as he saw what was plainly part of a human hand with two fingers still attached. He dropped the gruesome remains in shock, leapt to his feet and turned to see Jasmine making her way towards him. Fuck, Jazz, I just found part of a hand. Part of a what? She broke off as her legs were pulled out from under her and she went down, half hidden beneath the poppies. Jazz! Sean shouted her name over and over and started to run towards her. Jasmine began to scream, her hands flailing. Sean was 20 feet from reaching her when his own ankles were grabbed and he fell. He began tearing at his feet, finding them entwined by thick, ropey roots that were pulling him down into the spongy ground. His hands grabbed frantically and felt more of that stuff beneath him that was neither dirt nor plant. And he knew then what had happened to the people who had been in all of those cars. Fertilizer, he thought, as he struggled. Sean fought, thrashing and fighting his way to a standing position. He realized Jasmine had stopped screaming, and one glance back showed no sign of her, only a slight depression in the poppies where he thought she had been. He turned back in the direction of the road, maybe 50 feet away. He already felt his legs being circled again. He began kicking and pulling at roots, which wrapped around his hands. He knew he didn't have long left unless he saw a police car cruise along the two-lane highway and stop. He shrieked for help, trying desperately to raise his arms. Two uniformed cops got out of their car. Help me, Sean screamed, help! The cops stood beside their cruiser, watching impassively. Sean tried to scream again, but there was a root in his mouth, gagging him. The last thing he saw was the cops standing safely on the asphalt, directing the arriving tow trucks to remove the cars. That was so cool. <laughs> That's really awesome. You know, the short form has always been really hard for me, but but you handle it really well. That was that was terrifying all the way through. I loved it. That's great. Um, do you have a do you have a link yet of where these um, where these readings are going to take place, or or some? What should people search for to find them? Not yet. I would say um, probably the easiest thing to do would be to go to my website, which is lisamorton.com and subscribe to my newsletter uh, or follow me on Facebook um, because we don't have the exact launch date yet. And there are some really fun things going on with it that I can't quite talk about yet. Um, 
Gotcha. Uh, as soon as I have the final launch date, it will certainly be announced to either my newsletter, well, both my newsletter subscribers and my Facebook followers. Yes, and you all should absolutely sign up for Lisa's newsletter because it is one of the best I've ever seen. I, I receive it every month and um, it it is full of fascinating stuff and stories and, and just all kinds of things about her history with Hollywood and Halloween and supernatural stuff, just all the things that, that I, I love. So thank you for putting that together, by the way, because I really do enjoy that every month. Oh, that's great. I, that's why I do it. Um, I know it's supposed to be a promotional tool for me. I tend to make it into just a fun thing and sometimes forget to push the books. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, all right. So, oh, uh, I did also want to say I have those orange poppies here, and now I will never look at them quite the same way again. <laughs> I'm very happy to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love them, though. They are very beautiful. They are. And like I said, my backyard is full of them. Um, every spring, they just bust out all over back there. And it's interesting, depending on the amount of rainfall we get, they will either completely take over or be kind of patchy throughout back there. But yeah, they are gorgeous. Right on. All right. So um, Wiley Writers is a group of writers, uh, dark fiction writers specifically. And we are uh, working together to improve our craft, to improve our promotions, and to basically get the word out about all of us. Um, this, these readings are one of the ways that we're doing that. So hopefully you will subscribe and come back and uh, watch those that are coming out in the future. Also, you can go to wileywriters.net and check out what we're up to there. Um, if you're a writer, then uh, I definitely encourage you to check that out because we are doing some fun things uh, to help promote each other and uh, just generally make everybody's books a little more front and center. So thanks for being here. Thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you, Angel. This was fun. And um, yes, Wiley Writers is great. And I, I plan on trying to hang around more myself. So awesome. Awesome. That's great. Thank you. Have a have a great day, everyone.